trying to prove that men do not lead lives of quiet desperation. No way, they're loud. And when you think of loud men, don't you think of the men of Possum Lodge generally? And of my uncle in particular? <laughs> because he's the leader of the Possum Lodge, and that's only because of the, you know, the discouraging lack of turnout on the election day. But anyway, here's the star of the Red Green Show, and that's due mainly to the fact that, you know, he has the same name. Anyway, here he is, Mr. Red Green! Thank you, Harold. Thank you, and uh, welcome to Possum Lodge. Uh, please don't judge the show by anything Harold ever says or does. Uh, he's only my producer and director because, uh, first of all, he's my nephew, and secondly, this is black fly country, which really teaches you to put up with just about anything. <laughs> and I'm here to put juice into the show, like this. <laughs> Woo! Wouldn't you love to watch a half hour of that? Anyway, uh, things are really hopping up at the lodge this week. Uh, Eddie made a special stew. Uh, Tasted like a Hungarian galosh. You know what I think the problem is? I think Eddie doesn't concentrate on when he cooks. Well, that's it in a nutshell, Harold. And from a nutshell. You know, Eddie's mind is somewhere else. Yeah, Broadway. He wants to sing on Broadway. Well, no, I, no, I think it's, it's more like off-Broadway, isn't it, Harold? I mean, it, when he sings, it sounds off. I mean, it's like, like way off-Broadway, like maybe the Yukon. Yeah, I think we should just get on to the next segment, Uncle Red. Remember that pacing thing we talked about at the last production meeting? <laughs> yeah, okay, so anyway, uh, a bunch of the guys, you know, managed to uh, have a word with Eddie, you know, once the K.O. pectate had kicked in. And uh, they were kind of rough on him, especially Moose Thompson, because Moose had, he'd had a whole bag full of the stew, and uh, the thing with Moose is that he eats so darn fast, he really doesn't taste anything until he's into the third plateful. <laughs> You're going. Uh, yeah, so once Moose had finished, you know, uh, talking to Eddie about his uh, physical appearance, his religious preference, and his ethnic background, Eddie has decided to really back off on the cooking and focus his full attention onto his showbiz career. Woo! We're going! Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm done, Harold. Go ahead. Oh. Oh, oh, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Didn't do nothing. Okay, wait a second. <laughs> Larry. Larry's my manual up there in the booth. Ah, whoa, that's loud, loud. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> okay, attach air raid siren to truck alternator. Check. Let's see, oh, and then plug unit in. All right, Bill, you plug it in and I'll pump up the volume. <laughs> Dude, air raid siren? What, what is this thing, Eddie? This is a karaoke machine, Harold. You see, you put the, uh, the tape with just the music on it in here, right. and then you sing along. Very big in Japan. Wow, that's oh. surprising. You mean the Japanese workers are singing songs in the factories when they're making all those camcorders? <laughs> the Japanese are very powerful in the business, and there's no business like show business, mm -hmm. and that's my business, and now I've got a machine that's gonna hone my skills. Oh, you could cook on it. <laughs> I'm going to be on Broadway, Harold, and you are not going to rain on my parade. I'm going to be the next Bobby Vinton. How much does this thing cost you here, Eddie? Uh, I, I, I got a real deal from Murray. See, he, he makes them in his basement. Oh, wait, look, wait till you hear the sound on this thing, Red. <laughs> okay, Bill, uh, there's a plug over there behind the stove. You want to get it? show too. Bill, uh, Bill, 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 go get Doc Render. I think Eddie took a big jolt there. Why? Was he standing in water? No, but I am. <laughs> hey, Eddie, we got that songbook list for you. What's the matter with him? What, singing falsetto? <laughs> no way. He just got some feedback from your kamikaze machine there. And we brought you the soundtracks to Funny Girl, Annie Get Your Gun, and South Pacific. Except for I'm going to wash that man right out of my hair. Murray and I didn't think you wanted that one anyway. <laughs> well, you don't have to decide right now. Better get away from Dwayne. Might be a goner. Oh. <laughs> or is this his version of Silent Night? <laughs> <laughs> Silent Night. <laughs> well, I got my rubber sole shoes on, so I guess I'll discharge them. Bill, you want to ground that on the stove? <sighs> You know, with a touch more wire, we could use them to jumpstart the lawn tractor out back. <laughs> All right, let her rip. <laughs> Don't cry for me, Argentina. <laughs> you karaoke'd me. <laughs> hey, big spender. 
I'm standing right there. And all of a sudden, 76 trombones led the big parade. I got this incredible shock. Huh. Well, maybe you hooked it up wrong. I didn't hook it up wrong. How do you solve a problem like Maria? You built it wrong. And you are just darn lucky that I wasn't hurt or... When you reject, you reject. <laughs> and suffered permanent damage. Are you feeling okay, Eddie? Yes, Fred. I'm fine. Name. Doc. Very unusual, Red. Entertaining as hell, though. We're just lucky there wasn't a polka tape in that damn machine. <laughs> well, Murray, I think you better give Eddie his money back here. Hey, no. No way. I, uh, I could have danced all night. I could have danced all night. I don't want my money back. I just, I just want this machine fixed. I need it for my career. Eddie, I, I think a cash refund is enough of a long shot. Well, see, it, it wasn't my... Give it down to there. Shoulder length and longer. Money. I kind of borrowed it from the uh, the lodge uh, uh, entertainment fund. Uh, you guys better work this out between you. But whatever you come up with, it's got to be entertaining or or profitable, or kill one of you. You know, with that electric shock thing there, Eddie, I thought it was really entertaining. You know what? Maybe we could just like sell this to Alice Cooper. Oh well, maybe so. But she better not touch it till it's fixed. <laughs> Chicago, Chicago, it's my kind of town, it's my kind of town. <laughs> what? Don't stick your face in a hollow log. Don't squat on your haunches in a toxic bog. Don't lie face up in a cattle field. And don't ever date a woman named Crusher. <laughs> this week uh, in the Handyman Corner, we're going to show you how to uh, do some rust proofing uh, on your car. Uh, you know, uh, these days, uh, with uh, the government putting so much uh, salt on the roads, you know, they end up uh, retaining water and then uh, your car rusts out on you. So you end up having to do some body work or some, some sort of a defensive mechanism. Uh, a lot of people use a fiberglass, put the fiberglass on the car, but uh, that's hard to do and it's expensive, it smells funny, and uh, you can't ever put a fridge magnet and leave a message for anybody on your car after that. <laughs> uh, now, Moose Thompson, what he done was he uh, completely encased his truck in cement, uh, which was a kind of a novel approach. It really cut into his gas mileage, but if he's ever in an accident, he wins. <laughs> But uh, I want to take kind of a kind of a new approach. I want you to think about this. Linoleum. <laughs> Try putting some linoleum right on your car. It's it's fairly inexpensive. It's lightweight. It's durable. And if you get into a fender bender, you know, if you got a, a decent cushion floor on there, it could save your life. <laughs> what you do is uh, take her out and cut her out in roughly the shape of the car. Stick it on with a handyman secret weapon duct tape. Now, this will take you uh, three or four hours on a, on a Saturday or, or really any, any day. I mean, that part's up to you. But uh, I think you'll be quite surprised and, and to a certain extent amazed uh, at how it turns out. <laughs> now, I'm uh, kind of on a, a limited budget, so I did this all with, uh, with the samples. But uh, I suppose if uh, your money's no object, you would get, you know, the whole roll of uh, linoleum and 9 by 12 or whatever comes in and uh, do it all. All the same. I, actually, I kind of like this look, and I'm sure there's some people out there, maybe yuppies or what have you, that would uh, that would want to do it all in parquet or a uh, terrazzo tile of, of some kind. But <laughs> this is just fine for me. It's, uh, it's easy as heck to keep clean, too, because it's a, it's a no wax finish. You just uh, damp mop that down, especially if there's eggs or what have you on it. It comes right up. It looks real good. Myself, personally, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to polish this up, but that's just a, that's a pride thing. That's just something that I have. But uh, if any of you want to do this with anything, it's the same technique. As long as you've got the duct tape and the time, uh, you can have something that looks like this sitting in your driveway. So, until next time, remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful thing, is it not? <laughs> You 
It is autumn. One last ride in the boat. One last day at the cottage. One last drive in the car through the hills. And then the repo man takes it all away. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Eddie the cook wants us to keep that uh, carry hokey machine since it was bought with lodge money. But you know, it's awful hard to follow the argument when he keeps breaking into Rogers and Hammerstein. <laughs> I can understand uh, good value for the money, but I am 16 going on 17. <laughs> anyway, a bunch of us went down to Murray store to try to get a refund. Uh, we didn't know whether to use brute force or Perhaps something more subtle, like, uh, say, closing all the windows and getting Stinky Peterson to negotiate a settlement. See, you know, Uncle Red, you, Dwayne and Murray, they're both Lodge members, you know. I really can't see them intentionally ripping other Lodge members off. Well, no, no, I agree with that. But, you know, just to be on the safe side, uh, Moose and Helmet took down a couple of pickaxes and a Zamboni. That'll get Murray's attention, you know. Oh, wait a minute, that's violence. No, no, that's using violence as a tool, and I cannot adhere to violence in any form. Well, Harold, if I had your personality, I'd be against violence myself. Yeah, exactly. And you know, I'll bet you that violence didn't get you anywhere either, did it? Well, it sort of did. Oh, Murray gave you your money back? Not yet, but uh, I'll tell you, we got an unbelievable price on work socks. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, good deal. Way to go. Good work there, Uncle Red. <laughs> anyway, we may have to go to binding arbitration to settle this thing. What's that? Well, that's where we tie Murray and Dwayne into a chair and take their teeth out. <laughs> well, that's fair. Now, Doc, I really appreciate what you did for Eddie there. Took a heck of a jolt, didn't he? Huh? Well, I bet that shows up on this month's electric bill. Well, I've, uh, I've seen my share of electrocutions, Red. Really? I'd say he, uh... I'd say he took a peak voltage of 12 million amps of RC. Wow. A lot of curly hair left on his body. See, that seems like a, a lot of power, uh, Doc. It seems a little high to me, uh, 12 million amps. I mean, wouldn't that, wouldn't that kill a man? Well, uh, no. No, no, not if you got uh, both feet on dry ground, Red. Oh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as the, uh, the part of you touching the ground yeah. is uh, larger than the surface area of your own forehead, you're okay. Yeah. Oh. yeah, I learned that when I was working at the generating station. Oh, yeah? Like an electricity generating station? Well, that's the only kind I ever heard of. Oh. Of course, I don't know everything. Well, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were the biggest generating station in the hemisphere. Yep. 86 megawatts per day. Wow. Yep. Wow. <laughs> you know, uh, I remember at lunchtime, some of the fellows and I, we'd... Uh, bungee jump off the transformer tower. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, well, you'd be okay. You know, yeah, it was, uh, yeah. Until you got close to the ground, then there'd be this uh, flash of lightning arc across from your sinus cavities right into the metal tool shed. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, then it would rain. Uh, this week, uh, Bill's going to make one into the woods. Uh, we were going to talk about uh, first aid. How to look after injuries and that kind of, which is a, which is a good thing. Now he's got about I'd be an 80, 90 pound uh, bag of uh, first aid uh, medical equipment there, so he's really well equipped. This is the surgical tape and oh, oh my gosh, oh god, that oh the pain, you know the pain goes right up, right up your leg, it goes right into your back there, it gets into your central nervous system. But uh, luckily Bill had the surgical tape right out there. I'm going to wrap her up and uh, did kind of a nice job and a little bit of. A little bit of a handyman secret weapon sneaking into another another part of the show here. Uh, did a nice job, but the unfortunate part is, of course, that you know it was the wrong foot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's not. It's that. It's that. Ow! <laughs> and that not only up the backbone, but the pain gets right up into your brain, your the cranial section. Anyway, you got the uh, you got the red the foot, the cracked foot, all all wrapped up. Everything was oh, oh, oh golly. And. Uh, now, just get me up into the, into the standing position. We, you know, we were going to pretend... Oh, the, you know, the arms come up there. Oh, 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 sorry, Bill. Sorry, I didn't mean any of that, you know. But I was darn glad it happened. Oh, God, don't stand on my foot, Bill. Anyway, uh, if you can get me up into the... Now, this is kind of the uh, cantilever uh, seesaw kind of what I came up with. Unfortunately, Bill, Bill went down, but um, I really couldn't put any weight, any weight at all on the ankle, so... Uh, Bill says to me, what do you need is a, some sort of a crutch there, uh, you know, and I didn't have a crutch in his bag, uh, but, 
gonna take a saw. He's gonna kind of, he's gonna cut, you know, he's gonna try and cut something up. Gonna get a big, uh, get a branch, uh, what have you, and maybe. No, and that's Bill. Bill, that's a little. That, that's too. That's not good. You're gonna make a. That's a. There's no. That's too. Uh, it's heavy and it's too big. And no, it's not gonna work. No, I'll take it. Bill. Oh. <laughs> All right, so now that this required a little more surgical tape. Now the pain was running from my brain down into my foot. So uh, off he comes back with a uh, the branch he's gonna make into a crutch because it had that little fork thing and that's, see, that's what you need there. And a little high though. Uh, I don't think Minute Bull has a sprained angle. <laughs> hey, he's gonna, now Bill, you, don't watch us, Bill. Don't, don't look at the camera, Bill. Oh, uh, yeah, well, I tried, well, I, okay, so now I'm using the surgical tape on his hand, and we're getting them all, now he's got the crutch. You think I'm going to try this? I don't think so. I don't think so. Show us how it works, Bill. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now I can use a, oh, sorry, I was just tightening that, tighten that up. Uh, that was a sling, again, out of the, out of the bag, and, uh, so he's got a hand and a kind of a busted up arm, and I got the head and the foot thing. And now we'll get him up here. Just get him up standing. Now, he, you know, Bill doesn't look all that heavy, but when he starts to rock, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Bill. So I got a little more of the surgical tape, and uh, this was turning in, into quite a day, really. Uh, we haven't felt this bad since uh, New Year's Day. So up he comes. Now he's a bit woozy, so I thought I'd, I'd, you know, this is the fireman's lift, but. You know, gravity is a funny thing. It can sh it can shift. Oh, 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 back. oh, golly. So uh, this is something I found this darn interesting. If you get a couple of poles and you get a couple of old shirts out of your laundry hamper, uh, you can what you do is you 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 you, you put the sleeves of the poles over the uh, the, the sleeves of the shirts. <laughs> well, I have a head injury there. And over the poles, and uh, what you can make is uh, you make a stretcher because the, once you get the sleeves on there, you do up the buttons. And you got yourself, uh, you got yourself a stretcher. <laughs> but uh, I'll tell you, at this point, I've had enough of Bill. Uh, I'm hurting. I'm tired. I'm hungry. <laughs> well, things happen, you know. It was time to go, Bill. He can try some first aid on himself. I'm out of here. And over. <laughs> It's been uh, it's been quite a day, you know. After after a few trips to Murray's store, we had about as many work socks as we were ever going to need. But at that price, uh, who could say no? Even if they were singles. So you're pretty much giving up on this refund for the karaoke thing. Is that what you're doing? Well, you're getting a little ahead of me here, Harold. Well, that's not too hard to do. I think you can see why nepotism is the main cause of heart attacks. So Murray told Dwayne to fix the machine. The problem there being that uh, Dwayne is not exactly uh, a rocket scientist. Uh, he's more of a nose cone. <laughs> so anyway, Dwayne fixed the machine and he plugged it in. And he ended up getting zapped worse than Eddie. Huh, worse? Like what? Is he singing like Broadway show tunes too? Uh, well, no, Harold. Uh, Dwayne had a different tape in there. It was uh, Lauren Green reading Robert Service poetry. <laughs> so it's a nice change, you know. But I think we're going to be able to straighten up this uh, refund situation at tonight's uh, lodge meeting. Oh, there it is. That's the call of the meeting, Uncle Red. Come on, we got to go. Well, uh, if you'll just uh, excuse uh, me for a few minutes here, I just got to go down to the meeting, uh, straighten uh, the whole uh, deal up. It uh, won't take too long. Uh, while I'm gone, uh, why don't you just uh, sit quietly and discuss uh, your favorite part of the show so far? <laughs> Murray's pride ourselves on having the lowest prices around, but that also means that refunds and exchanges are a long shot at best. Well, even so, even so, we have done everything in our power to satisfy Eddie here, which led to an unfortunate injury sustained by my assistant, Dwayne. 
Now, there may even be brain damage, but who can tell? Don't worry about me. I'm fine now. <laughs> There's strange things done neath the midnight sun by the men who boil for gold. Dwayne has nothing to do with this. I want my happy talk, keep talking, happy talk. Get money back. Don't you listen? Are you hard of hearing? Aren't you listening? Don't you listen? Can you not hear me? You're not going to get your... <laughs> On the marge of Lake Labarge, I cremated Sam McGee. <laughs> Money back. Oh, is that... I enjoy being a girl. <laughs> so, if you think that you can... <laughs> Oh, Sam McGee came from Tennessee where the cotton <laughs> Tell me what to do. Well, then let me tell you. Oh, uh, Dwayne. Uh, well, uh, hi. Sorry, uh, so, uh, sorry I'm late. <laughs> well... Do you two have anything else to say, then? Uh, no. <laughs> no, me neither. No thoughts. What? No thoughts from Dwayne? Well, this day is full of surprises, isn't it? <laughs> uh, what do you suppose just happened there, Doc? Well, Red, uh, they've either created what's called a spark capacitor and discharged ions of opposite charges, which neutralizes the electrical imbalances of the brain, or... Or it's real love. It's uh, too soon to tell, really. Well, hope for the best on that. Uh, any other large business, uh, Bill? Okay, then I'm going to call on Doc to give us evening's entertainment. Okay. <laughs> okay, fellas. Well, now, I don't think I told all you guys about the time that uh, me and Maury Amsterdam were fly fishing on the Dead Sea. Yeah, of course. Well, as we say up the lodge, we don't care how it ends, as long as it does. We didn't get our money back, but uh, any machine that can electrocute our cook has to be worth something. And you know, seeing Eddie and Dwayne perform together, you get a sense of why vaudeville died. Anyway, if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting, and uh, I'm in the mood for something dangerous, so you might want to invite your folks over. Well, anyway, till next time, on behalf of myself and uh, Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. Well, luckily I was wearing an act one at the time, so I could breathe down there. I was down there for about 40 feet, cruised along the bottom. Water, crystal clear as far as you can see. Way up ahead of me, I noticed there's no fish up there. It's some kind of a, a weird kind of human-shaped thing. Well, it's paddling and kicking to beat the band. I look behind me, and there's Maury coming straight at me as well. Guess he's got both of us. That's it. Hang on there. We don't know. <laughs> Finish this story. Not a word of it's a lie. <laughs>